originally in Spanish, March 2023. A question from a follower. But is it clear that we are not going to reach enlightenment before we leave? People never attain enlightenment in their life on earth. Enlightenment is not a state you reach. It is a path. You can be enlightened anywhere because it doesn't depend on where your body is. It depends on where your mind is and your frequency and your approach to life, your philosophy and how coherent you are in general. You never reach enlightenment because it is not something you reach. It is a way of living and thinking. It is dynamic, evolving with your soul, ever-changing and never static. Life is movement. Consciousness is movement. If it stops, it ceases to exist. That is why it is not a place or a state to want to reach. You are enlightenment. You don't live in it. Thank you. I was also asked, how did Buddha become enlightened if he didn't leave the earth? He became enlightened because limits are an illusion, as we have explained before. The only thing that limits the expansion of the mind and consciousness are the attachments to limiting ideas that each person holds, conscious or unconscious. It doesn't matter if there are low lunar energies or if there are Van Allen bands. The high frequency of enlightenment, which is the same as having a very high contact with the original source, transcends everything and nothing stops it. No matter where you are, you can always attain enlightenment because being in one place or another and the apparent limitations of each place are only an illusion created by the mind itself. You come to Earth to break those limits? Did many achieve it or did they just come close? I imagine that can't be measured. You could say yes, because on Earth the limitations are very strong. You are suffocated by the materialistic, the mundane. They make you believe that you are nothing, that you are just a bag of meat without a soul. So you have to overcome that and reach enlightenment or high consciousness in spite of those apparent limitations, which are just an illusion on a more expanded level, but very real on the daily level of the experience of life on Earth. It doesn't matter where you are. Okay. And what about the dominant frequency of the place? Doesn't it affect some people? The dominant frequency on Earth in terms of consciousness is all the values of the matrix itself. That is to say, the dominant frequency is what wants to normalize you so that you have the same values as the average of the population. So that you don't question anything and obey what they impose on you. That is why you must vibrate higher than that and stay strong. That is the challenge of being on Earth. Not to lose yourself as souls and to evolve in spite of all that. But we said that on Earth that was a little bit difficult because of humanity itself, right? It is more difficult, yes. On Earth more than anything else you advance in a spiritual way. That is then reflected in the DNA, as always, of course. I mean, more difficult in the immediate and practical aspect. Every experience gradually alters the DNA, because it is a record, 
It is a memory. They say that many reached enlightenment. I wonder, are you sure that many have reached enlightenment? I don't know how you can evaluate that if the whole history is false. Even the majority of those avatars. That's right. At this point, we even doubt whether Buddha existed or not. Because he shares elements in common with all those enlightened ones of the past, including Jesus Christ. Most probably, it is just another legend. To tell the truth, we cannot know. But to me, it smells like it was someone real who then had attributes and things that didn't happen attached to him to be used as an avatar for their population control purposes. Any avatar accepted by millions looks like something made up. Well, but maybe that legend can make others try to reach that state. But how do you recognize that you are truly enlightened and not having that ego of superiority of I am enlightened and you will never be? Understanding that you will never be enlightened is part of enlightenment itself and being enlightened. It is not a state that you have to get to. And once you are there, you are there and you've made it. Rather, it is a state or process of consciousness that is constantly evolving and growing. Knowing what we know and how they manipulate the perception of humanity and that they don't let anything go unnoticed, something smells fishy about Buddha. Those giant statues and all of that just makes you see how small you are in front of those giant statues. From the controller's point of view, someone genuinely enlightened working on his own is a danger. They would crush him. And that's been going on forever. Or if they don't crush him, they distort him into something that's useful to them. However, about the Buddha avatar, he is the one I like the best. And he does bring great high-frequency inspiration. I am not discrediting him. I even have three Buddha figurines in my room. And on the ship, there are large Buddha heads adorning places, like the atrium and around the gym area. Along a corridor seen in the Mari channel, there is a large Buddha over two meters in lotus position as an ornament. In front of the meditation hall that Mari showed in a photo. So, avatar or not, he is very respected here. But that is another religion, Buddhism, isn't it? It is, but Buddha is not Buddhist. It was not founded by Buddha. The Buddhist monks themselves say that he is only Buddha. Whatever they set up with Buddha afterwards is not Buddha's problem. Still, it is very possible that he never existed. But I repeat, we cannot know. And why the interest in leaving so many statues of him? Maybe so that people will insert that avatar into their memory and thus cement stories like they do with Jesus Christ? Yes, and that is already the work of the controllers who made Buddhism a religion. Buddha did not order to make statues everywhere, including huge ones deep in the jungles of Cambodia, Laos, Thailand and Vietnam. Yes, then some fanatics would destroy them. That is part of what Kabbal itself always promotes. The destruction of everything that no longer serves them to impose a new history. Equally false. The destruction of ancient Buddha statues is the same phenomenon and it is for the same reason as the burning of Notre Dame.